In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the current conditions, diving into the upcoming pattern as well, where there is that tropical disturbance to talk about and a massive heat wave as well. Let's just take a look here at the current conditions, and we're taking a look here. We see that for the north central regions of the United States, there is a lot of storminess, but if you horseshoe around that circle I just drew, uh, first off, it looks like a face. Second off, there is not a lot going on. Now, Texas, some of the south, we do see some activity, but really outside of that circled area, there is nothing really going on for the most part. Now, as we zoom into the northwest, we see there is some activity popping up offshore, but that is hardly worth noting. Obviously, as we work our way towards Montana here, we do have some activity diving down from Canada. Uh, and the more central and eastern regions of the state here are seeing more of that activity, obviously. But really, I, I would say the entirety of the state here is seeing some sort of storminess, precipitation, things like that happening. There is a lot of yellows and oranges that are about to move down here from Canada into Montana. So I would say heavier rainfall is on the way. Keep that in mind. As we work our way down to kind of Colorado, Nebraska, these areas, there was some showers around. But these have really dissipated over the last few hours. Even some snowfall showing up there in the mountains. But this has all kind of died down over the last few hours, like I mentioned. As we see the north central United States, there is some thunderstorm activity going on here on the southern end of things. And then some heavier showers happening here to the north of that. Uh, so there is just storminess around in general. And I think here in the northeast, we're about to see this section dive down, I would say, uh, especially here for New York, but even New England potentially. That could bring some heavier rainfall as we're seeing heavy rainfall pop up with that pocket at this point. Uh, but at the very least, you can expect heavier showers to move through later on in the day today. We'll take a look at that in the model guidance. And outside of that, the really the only other area I see is some isolated activity here in Florida, which is kind of always possible. Showers and thunderstorms, very isolated there. Uh, but not only that, we see southern Texas here. We see some moving up from Mexico here. Mostly showers, but could be isolated thunderstorms as well. All right, now let's go ahead and move on and talk about the modeled guidance. All right, now here we are taking a look at some of that upcoming storminess. By the time we're reaching this afternoon, we can see the southeast starts to get some storminess here. We see that the kind of north central, northwestern regions here are seeing this storminess continue with this 991 millibar low pressure center. A lot of our severe weather today will come in the upper Midwest there. So we need to watch for that. And also some of these showers moving into the northeast, although they're more minor by that point. Thursday afternoon, what we see happening is this low has really moved up northeastward. There is a bit of a cold front moving through, so we could experience some thunderstorms along that frontal area. We do see that for the northwest activity does return. Friday afternoon here, we're dealt with kind of a huge trough in the west, and then a, a or a better yet, a, a bigger trough in the west here for the northwest, bringing some storminess as well. And then a ridge just to the east of that area there. So a lot of the activity is going to be here for this western region of the nation. Uh, we do see some storminess in the east, but it's just a plain old trough going on at this point out here. But this whole situation with diving air here and then the rising air there is going to create a very interesting scenario with a low in between. Pretty interesting setup there. Saturday, we see a lot of the same, a little bit more dramatic, I think, with the jet streams here. We see, again, that big trough there. Very large ridge here, and also still a very big trough there for the northwest. Still a lot of storminess up here as well. Storminess for the southwest also, wow. And then, really in the eastern half of the country, it is quieter, but you can tell that there is some scattered about activity. So nothing can be ruled out, but it's going to be getting quieter overall. Sunday, it's a lot of the same. Most of our activity is out here in the west, as you can see, and then very quiet outside of Florida here. In the southeast Monday it's a lot of the same except we see this feature here this is a bit of a warm front actually developing it looks like so we see our low here warm front here so uh, we could see a cold front start to develop here like that and and what we're gonna see is warm air really surging up through these regions with some storminess on the front end but really nice conditions out um, behind that precipitation and then we see probably cold air diving in behind. We'll probably see some precipitation uh, develop along this area here is my what I'm imagining. I mean a little bit but really that's not too crazy actually. We see like at times like this frame it looks like it's trying to get going with some activity along that cold front but I'm actually surprised that it really just innocently moves away I was with mostly just a warm front here. I think this mostly has to do with this low taking over, it looks like, because this was our original low, uh, but this one becomes the primary low. 
uh, and it looks like just an extended warm front through there, which is really crazy. But this is what allows for that uh, really big heat wave to happen next week, actually. Uh, but no cold front to be seen, actually, which is pretty crazy. Uh, we do eventually, though, by time reaching about Thursday, Friday time frame next week, we do look to see a cold front there it appears. Uh, but it's not too crazy. I, I mean, this does not look like a major cold front by any means. This is Friday time frame. Uh, and even Friday evening here, we see it's reaching the eastern seaboard. That's next Friday. So that's pretty far out, guys. So uh, take everything with a grain of salt in the long range. We are expecting a heat wave. We're going to talk about that in a second. Let's talk about the 10-day total precipitation. And still, I mean, most of that activity is either south or north of the United States. There is some reds popping up in the northern United States. Uh, let's just go over the color tables real quickly, though. If you're anywhere in the grays, you're expecting about a tenth of an inch or less. Whites will be practically no precipitation, by the way. Greens will be about a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Blues will be half an inch to an inch. Yellows will be an inch to two inches. And reds will be two to five inches of precipitation. For the total snowfall here, anywhere in the grays, you're expecting a dusting, if anything. Blues will be two to six inches of snowfall. Purples will be six to ten. And then your pinks will be ten to twenty. Pastels will be twenty inches plus. But we're not expecting even nearly as much snowfall for the Northwest as we were just a couple of days ago because one of our bigger snowstorms that's coming up has ended and we're really seeing this kind of subside again. But, I mean, at this point, if we're looking at June 25th and there's still snow on the ground, we might start seeing snow by August again or September. We might only get a month or two off of talking about snow at this point because we've seen such late season snow this year, uh, which is wild. I would be amazed if we saw snow popping up in July. So if in 15 days we're still seeing snowfall, that would be really impressive. But only time we'll be able to tell. What we're going to do is we're going to move on, talk about the upcoming temperature pattern, briefly talk about the National Hurricane Center's outlook, and then we're going to talk about the Storm Prediction Center as well. All right, now here's the upcoming temperature pattern. And we can see that we're basically featuring a trough in the west ridge in the east at this point. So we see the air masses are about like this. A lot of warm air able to make its way up into the east. It's going to be a very hot day today. What we see happen is by Thursday, it gets hotter around the nation for the most part outside of the northwestern states. By Friday, it looks like this kind of teeter-totters back towards this side. Uh, so we're seeing the balance of things kind of get thrown off. And by Saturday, we have a full-on trough in the west, ridge in the central, and another trough here in the east. That's what we're dealing with. Uh, and by Sunday, it's still sticking around. But this is when the heat wave's about to set in. Uh, what, what really fuels this heat wave that's coming up is we're going to see cold air surge into the western United States. And what this does is it sends a tidal wave of warmth for the east, basically. Uh, so all of this warmth has to head eastward. And then the cold is not going to be able to win that battle, so it's going to lift back off. So we're going to see that happen. And then the, the, basically the warmth is going to anchor itself in this area. And the cold is going to anchor itself in this area for a few days. So by Monday, we see things starting out very hot temperatures across these regions. Tuesday, things get even worse. These browns are indicating temperatures that are about 20 degrees above average. So let's say your average temperature is 80. You're going to be at 100 degrees if you're in uh, the 20 degrees above normal area. So that's crazy, <laughs> by the way. That is absolutely insane. So we're going to see basically um, temperatures at least 90 degrees plus. I think for all of these brown regions is a pretty safe bet. I think everybody averages at least, you know, 75 degrees in the summertime that I'm, I'm circling here. So uh, we're going to see a heat wave for most of these areas. Uh, Tuesday, that's Tuesday. Wednesday, the heat really sets in for the southeast here. We're, we're taking a look at crazy stuff. So Tuesday and Wednesday especially here. Let's see if we get the third day. Yeah, Thursday, so we get another day of these browns popping up. So this might be at least three days in a row of 100 degrees plus for a lot of these areas, uh, which is definitely a heat wave, by the way. Uh, and even Friday, we see a lot of this heat sticking around. It, it kind of backs off from the coast here, as you can see. We get a little bit of colder air intruding there. But, I mean, it's still around here at the end of the model run. So who knows how long this heat wave is going to last, but uh, at least 20 degrees above normal for a lot of those gray, brownish areas for three days in a row indicates that some areas might be seeing 100 degrees plus for three days in a row or more, uh, which is definitely far beyond what is considered a heat wave. We only need it to be 90 degrees plus for a heat wave, so for it to be potentially 100 degrees plus means that this is border, it, this, it's a major heat wave is what we're potentially taking a look at here, if not historic. The, Euro the European model has been bordering on historic with the heat wave for a little bit here, talking about 110 degrees at times for the southeast, which is crazy. 
Uh, but obviously we need to move closer before we feel really confident about exact temperatures. But for now, a heat wave seems very likely early next week. We're talking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, into Thursday, potentially longer. So keep that in mind. Stay tuned with us, and we're going to keep you updated on that topic. Now what we're going to do is move on and talk about the National Hurricane Center real quickly. We have a 30% chance of development over the next five days now, so we've kind of backed off from the National Hurricane Center. These models have really suppressed this low-pressure system. I will say we have a 20% chance, chance of development over the next 48 hours, uh, and then only a 10% more chance over the next five days. So the three days following the next 48 hours, we will only have a 30% chance of development now, which is 10% less than yesterday, where I think we had a 40% chance of development. So things are not looking uh, favorable as favorable for this to develop, and really the models have caused this to really trend south. What we've seen is... It looks like it's going to hover around land there in Central America and in Mexico uh, more than we originally had anticipated. And that's kind of the reasoning here, why, why odds are going down. But we will continue to update you guys on this daily as well, so be sure to tune in daily. Now, what we're going to do is move on and talk about the Storm Prediction Center. Real quick. All right, now here's your day one categorical outlook. And in the lighter greens, we have a general thunderstorm risk there. That's where we expect general thunderstorms, but everything is possible or anything is possible. So heat every watch, warning, and advisory. We have two darker green regions going on here, and that's going to be our marginal risk areas of severe weather, where we expect isolated severe weather to occur on today, Wednesday, June 15th. The two yellow areas there is our slight risk regions where we expect scattered severe weather. And then the orange area up there in the upper Midwest is our enhanced risk of severe weather. And that's where we expect more widespread severe weather to become possible. I can't believe it's already June 15th, by the way, guys. How is it June 15th already? It's like we just hit June and now we're already halfway through June. Unbelievable. By the way, somebody heard me say yesterday, this is totally off topic, but somebody heard me say, uh, we're nearly at the middle of summer, and they're like, oh, summer doesn't start till June 21st. Meteorological summer starts on June 1st. Uh, and really, when we're talking about the summer weather, I would say July is kind of the middle um, of summer. Kind of early to mid-July is going to be your, your middle of summer, maybe even late July. But we're, we're nearing the middle of summer weather. Uh, and fall starts on September 1st uh, in you know, meteorological terms. And it matches up more with the weather, by the way, the meteorological seasons, um, more than like the calendar seasons. So a little fun fact there, but the seasons match up better when you use the <laughs> meteorological one for the weather conditions, at least. Now for day two here, so we got a little off topic there. We have two general thunderstorm risks, one there that you can clearly see in the eastern and central United States, but one up there for the northwest as well that's kind of smaller that might be harder to notice. Again, these are all the areas where we expect general thunderstorms. The two darker green regions there that you can see in the eastern half of the nation is our marginal risk areas where we expect isolated severe weather for day two, which is tomorrow, Thursday, June 16th. And then the yellow area there in the northeast in the Ohio Valley, that's our slight risk area where we expect scattered severe weather to take place. Day three, we have, let's see, one, two, three, four general thunderstorm risk areas in the lighter greens where we expect general thunderstorms. And then we have a marginal risk there kind of for the southeast, a little bit of the mid-Atlantic and Ohio Valley. And that's where we expect isolated severe weather to take place on Friday, June 17th. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. For today's confidence tab, we're still at a four out of six. I really don't know what the high, like the highlight of this video is. I don't think it's the tropical system anymore. I do think it is the heat wave probably, but we still need to learn more about that. So that's why I'm kind of a little bit uh, hesitant to move up just yet. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Larry LePan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I'd also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Holly McCullough, the Catbite, Charles Dennett, Bill Dallas, Gary's, and John Colisi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.